was confusing, a little dysfunctional growing up in the inner city. I grew up in a single parent home uh, with my mother and little sister and uh, my mom worked a lot. So I was responsible for getting myself to school, getting myself home, looking after my sister and, you know, just being like, quote, the man of the house at a young age. I've been a big brother since 1985 and I uh, grew up in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Got interested in Big Brothers Big Sisters because of Rick McCampbell. Rick said there was really, really a need and I had the time, I was a bachelor and, and uh, um, so I did it. I had no clue about Big Brothers and Big Sisters. I didn't know they existed. It was a blessing that my mother got the information and she felt there was a need to have uh, another male in my life. We started off pretty slow. Um, and I think everybody is a little scared because they're just just starting on this. I've never done it before. And, and Cuevas, he was a little bit intimidated by me. I was thinking like, okay, who is this guy? What's going on? Because I still couldn't grasp this big brother thing. He made it so simple and easy for me. And he made it so like natural for me to be comfortable and trust him because he just was himself, you know? And we had a lot of things in common. Everything that we did, like we both enjoyed it. I probably broke all the rules with Big Brothers Big Sisters. <laughs> and we went kayaking, we went uh, water skiing, we went snow skiing, uh, Notre Dame games. He loved football and he was very good at football. Some of the things that I remember that always stick with me is going up to the lakes, learning how to swim, learning how to ski. My most vivid memory was uh, taking him swimming for the first time and, and throwing him into the deep end. I remember he threw me in the lake right off the pier. I was afraid the fish would eat me or bite me and all that kind of junk. I didn't like how the bottom would feel on my feet. Stan broke that real quick. I think I was called a few names <laughs> from a seven-year-old. <laughs> and from there on, uh, I became a really good, strong swimmer. I remember being taught how to water ski. And this is a long way because I was just afraid to get in the water. So now this man has me tied up to a boat with a life jacket and a bar with a string on it, right? And the boat's just gonna take off and I gotta hold on. <laughs> so, but I was pretty good at it at a young age. You know, I had fun with it. You, usually you go out on a boat, it takes forever to get a skier up. He got up the first time and the smile on his face, I'll never forget that. It was no big deal because that fear of water was gone. I wanted to change Cuevas' environment and it, it, he had a rough environment. And uh, I wanted Cuevas to see the other side. I grew up in the inner city of Fort Wayne. You rarely leave the south side of Fort Wayne, right? I never even went to Glenbrook Mall growing up as a kid. Coming out here to the southwest side of Fort Wayne, it was totally different. It was more uh, country, but it was quiet. It was cleaner, it was peaceful. You're around well manicured lawns and homes and you know, people with cars in the driveways and things like that, right? It was, it was definitely an eye opener. And for me, it was very important because when I had my children, I wanted to raise my children in this area as well because it was so peaceful, it was calm. It planted the seed in me that I had options and there were other opportunities. What I see with Cuevas is he needed direction from the start. And um, otherwise, you know, we, we've talked about this. He could have easily gone down the wrong, the wrong way of the street and who knows. Stan helped plant that seed. You know, because I knew I had to get an education, right? I knew I had to stay out of trouble and do things the right way. Being around him, having that relationship and knowing that uh, he cared about me and loved me, like he didn't want to let him down, right? I'm proud of Cuevas. I mean, Cuevas 
has done exactly what I wanted him to do. He's successful, he works hard, he's raised a great family, and he became part of my family, my entire family. I was in his wedding. Our first tux, our first ride in a limo, right? And no matter where we went, we were surrounded around white people, right? And here's this little black kid. But they asked him who he is. He said, he's my brother. He's my brother. And vice versa. You know, I'm growing up in the inner city, going away in high school, and hear this white man come around, and they like, Tate, who is that? That's my brother. You know? So... It, he didn't have to tell me he cared. He was the example. And I could tell, even to this day. I remember Stan, we were riding, I want to say we were on County Line Road going towards Columbia City. And I remember Stan saying that our time was coming to an end bust out crying, right? And he didn't end it. We kept it going, and that told me he cared. It was bigger than big brothers and big sisters for him. Match has never been closed. I mean, it, it, it might be for big brothers, big sisters, but like I said, this is the lifetime. I, I don't regret it one day at all. He's been a part of my life for over 40 years. And in Slam, you're taught to treat all of God's creation with love and respect. My whole life, he's been showing me Islam and he doesn't even know Islam because he took this stranger, taught me how to speak, social skills, conquer fears and at the foundation of that is big brothers and big sisters without big brothers and big sisters I never would have met Stan big brothers and big sisters it's like this big angel that sends out other angels that's what it was for me